Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I wanted to do a little talking video, so I went on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, all that stuff, telling you guys to send me your questions, whether it's beauty or personal or whatever. Anyway, so here we go. Did you plan on being engaged or married by a certain age? I never did, but find myself now the only friend that's not even in a relationship while all, my, while all my friends are either engaged or close to it. I'm only 26 and I feel it's kind of young, but maybe I'm wrong. I think a lot of people do this. When you're like in high school or just when you're in your teen years, you think, oh, by the time I'm 25, I'm gonna own a house, and I'm gonna have all these kids, and I'm gonna be married and all that stuff. And then when you get to 25, you're like, uh. <laughs> in a way, I thought that I would be married by a certain age because, I don't know, I feel like that's just a common thing that people do. You just think, oh, I'm gonna have all this stuff together, I'm gonna have my life figured out by a certain time, and then you get to that age and then you don't. I never rushed the thing, the whole thing. I lived, I, have kind of a very free spirit and I just kind of take each moment day by day or moment by moment or idea by idea or week by week kind of thing. I don't think about I need to do this by this age. Yeah, 26 is still young, but at the same time, if that's what you want to do, if that if you want to get married, then like go out and meet people. Seriously, I just I think that, you know, obviously you can't rush things and you can't rush love and, you, and if it's not meant to be, it's not meant to be. But at the same time, if you're just like sitting at home all the time, every single day, then you're never going to meet that person. And my thing is, when it comes to meeting guys, honestly, it's really not that hard. If you are a girl, it's really not that hard to meet guys. But one of my biggest tips is to always like go to different social settings you know don't just go to the club or to the bar or go on tinder and go online and things like that to meet guys i think if somebody invites you to their book club or something you should go because you never know who you're gonna meet even if you don't meet your husband there you might meet a friend and her brother or something might be single you never know so my number one thing is like stay open to any kind of opportunity any social setting because you never know who you're gonna meet Long story short, no, I didn't have a certain age that I wanted to be married or engaged. And even now, I'm not in a rush. I'm just like chilling, just living my life like it's golden, you know? Hi, Brittany. I'm currently halfway done with cosmetology school. Do you have any advice or suggestions on how to get myself started in a salon? What should I do? Thanks, girl. Okay, my number one tip for either fresh out of beauty school people or while you're still in beauty school. It depends on the state, on the state you live in and the laws. But my number one thing is start as an assistant. I always suggest start as an assistant if you can. Start as an assistant. Sorry, my refrigerator is running. <laughs> because beauty school teaches you about hair and it teaches you about the science of hair and things like that, but you don't learn artistry until you are out in the real world. Same thing as you don't learn true customer service and dealing with different types of personalities. And there, there's kind of like a socializing thing that comes along with being a hairstylist as well. Like you have to be able to interact with any kind of person at any given time. And I feel like for me before I, when I was still in school and when I was younger, I was very, not sheltered, but there was only a certain type of people that, or person that I would be friends with. But then when you're out in the real world and you're in a salon, you're gonna have clients who are young, who are old, who are different races from you and things like that. So I think that being an assistant um, is wonderful because you get to, first of all, you learn the, the artistry of hair. And then secondly, you get to learn the social thing because at this point in my life, I feel like I can, talk and keep up a conversation with any kind of person. It doesn't matter who you are. You learn that thing when you when you do hair. Like, you can just talk to a person, talk to a person. Whereas, you know, when I was in beauty school and I was younger, the only type of person I felt like I could relate to is some 18-year-old girl who likes to play with hair and makeup. When in reality, or years later, I kind of learned the social aspect of I can talk to male, female, old, young, any kind of race, any kind of background, rich, poor, whatever. So in a nutshell, start as an assistant if you can before just going out to the sharks and just starting straight away and doing hair. Um, you'll thank me later. 
How did you figure out that hair was your passion? I've always been into hair. Hair is my first love. I have just always been obsessed with hair. Ever since I learned how to braid on my Barbie doll, you know the one that had like super long hair down to its ankles? Do you guys ever have that Barbie doll? I don't know what Barbie doll is, but I remember I had a Barbie doll when I was like four or five years old and it had hair down its ankles and my mom taught me how to braid on that and then ever since then I was like obsessed with hair. And then on top of that, as you guys know, I'm biracial. So, and my hair is more on the black side of the spectrum. So my mom, when I was little, she didn't know what the heck to do with my hair, okay? And so eventually she just started letting me do my own hair and then she gladly started letting me do my own hair. And then from there I started to play with my hair because my hair was so difficult and I would get made fun of because of my hair and things like that. So then I started to experiment with my hair and I started to get good at it. And um, then I started to do my friend's hair and things like that. And then, you know, high school, whatever went on and I did the whole community college thing for a little while because I wanted to figure my life out and see what I wanted to do. All my friends were going off to college, so my parents told me to go to beauty school. They, they wanted me to start beauty school when I was like 17 or something, but then I was like, I'm not going to be a freaking hairdresser. You know, I just thought that in order to be successful in this world or to be respected, I guess, then you had to have a degree and you know that whole thing that whole thing that they that they sell you i just thought you had to go to you have to go to college you have to go to college you know which i'm not knocking people who go to college but you don't have to be um you don't have to go to college to be successful in america you don't okay. yeah i did the whole community college thing didn't work out and then eventually i was like okay i, I want to move out of my mom's house i'm sick of this i want a career i want to make money and what am I good at? I'm great at hair. So let me just go to beauty school. My mom and my, my dad had been pushing me to go for a while anyway. So I was like, I have nothing to lose at this point. <laughs> so I decided to do that. Went to beauty school or started beauty school the next day and never looked back. The best decision I ever made in my life. If you're passionate about something, just do it. Okay, just do it. Um, Can you talk about your past as a pothead? You mentioned it once in a video. Okay, so I used to be a so-called pothead, or I described myself as a pothead. I didn't do, I didn't drink or smoke or anything like that in high school. I was seriously, even when I, when I turned 18 after high school, when I would go to, when I knew people, if I would work with people, or if I had friends, or whoever, or else I would go visit my friends who lived in dorms, and they would have dorm parties and all that stuff, and they would be smoking weed, I used to think like, oh my gosh, that is so bad i mean to me it was the equivalent i was like i would never touch weed i would never smoke pot in my whole life and um it was the equivalent of if somebody just casually was doing heroin or something in the other room okay i used to think it was just like so bad right <laughs> then what had happened was i'm just kidding one day, I think it was the 4th of July, I think I was about 19 or so, I smoked pot for the first time, and it was just, that was a one-time thing. Long story short, that was the first time, and then that was like, whatever. And then I think a year or two later, I met a friend, and she and her boyfriend smoked together a lot all the time, and so they offered it to me, and I was like, uh, I don't know how to smoke really I, I, I it didn't appeal to me and I was like I don't know how to smoke anytime I smoke I, anytime I have smoked I've coughed and whatever and then I learned how to smoke and then from there I just started smoking regularly and I can honestly say this is gonna be a controversial thing I'm sorry if you're a young child who happens to watch this but in my personal opinion I honestly feel like smoking pot helped me in so many ways it helped me to see things differently like it helped me to, to see things in a way where i just thought okay it's really not that bad things aren't that bad it helped me to i don't know it just helped me to see the world differently it helped relieve my anxiety about certain things or where i would worry or feel depressed and another thing about marijuana is that 
it's just it, it really opened my eyes up to the fact that people from all walks of life smoke and i didn't where i didn't know that before it's almost like it's its own secret little world in a way i really enjoyed my time when i did smoke um i would smoke a lot i would smoke almost every day and that was a phase of my life i don't smoke anymore not because I'm against it, but just because that was a phase of my life and it it was for a couple of years and it was fun while it lasted, but now my life is different. I'm in a different place. I have so many so many more responsibilities and some people it works out for them. You got you know, some people can smoke, they're successful, they work hard and do all that kind of stuff. That's wonderful. For me now, I kind of start to feel like, "Oh my gosh, what am I doing with my life?" I start getting paranoid about the fact, like I feel bad and I can't get out of my head and it's not fun and then it's just a waste of time and money and whatever, all that kind of stuff. So that's why I don't smoke anymore, but it was fun while it lasted. Honestly, I don't have any regrets. That was probably one of the best decisions I made in my life. Seriously, it, that sounds so dramatic and I'm not trying to persuade anybody. I don't want, the thing is also, I don't want any young teens to watch this and hear my perspective and think that you have to do what I do. Like, live your life and make decisions for yourself. You know what I'm saying? Don't watch people like me on the internet or anybody on the internet and think that you have to do what they do just because, you know, it's the same reason, it's the same reason why I don't do all this plastic surgery stuff and do all that that's in style right now. It's just not for me. It, you know, even though it's, it's, common and a lot of people are doing it and whatever it's for them and it's just not my thing and just because I see it doesn't mean that I have to do it you feel me so don't listen to me don't make decisions on your own okay it's my little disclaimer that's all I'm gonna say I try to be very open with you guys I want to be very open with you guys I don't want to hide anything I don't lie about anything and I know this whole topic is kind of gonna might be controversial maybe I'm just thinking about it too much and you, you guys are probably like hey be quiet like move on to the next thing but I'm just saying how do you manage money to buy a house slash owning a business? So I think that that is wonderful. Actually, some of the most questions that I asked are not really personal, but they're like about business things and about money and things like that. And I think that that is great. I love sharing knowledge. I love helping other women to just, or people in general, whether you're a man or a woman, to make the most out of your life and your talent, right? My number one thing with owning a home or purchasing your first home and also own a business is be wise with the money that you make whatever job you are starting with you want to save your money number one thing to have is a little bit of money okay you don't need a lot of money believe it or not you don't need a lot of money but you do need some money because for to buy a home you need to put a down payment on a home in order to get a loan from a bank you need to prove that you can pay your loan off you know and secondly, have good credit, okay? This is so important and girl, if you are 18 or 19 or just young like that, be on top of your credit, okay? I ruined my credit by the time I was like 19, okay? And I have good credit now, okay? <laughs> it took me a couple years. When you're 18, they come after you, okay? I was getting all this stuff in the mail, like, oh, sign up for this credit card and whatever. Don't get trapped into credit cards. If you're gonna get one credit card, that's fine. Get you a little $300 credit card and pay it off. Pay your credit cards off. And don't just pay the minimum a month of $25 or whatever your minimum is. Just pay it off pay the whole thing off all the time get you a, like i said a 300 dollar credit card you know 50 dollars here pay it immediately fill up your gas tank with your credit card pay it immediately you know just be on top of your credit because credit is so important okay and i didn't realize how much it would hurt me until eventually at that time i lived with my mom but then eventually when i wanted to get my own apartment by myself first apartment completely by myself they were like um <laughs> Is this your credit score? Save the money that you do make. Even if you have a minimum wage job, seriously, when you're young, start saving. Okay, start saving. Even if it's $10 here, $20 here, $5 here, that stuff adds up, okay? When I was an assistant and I would just get my little tips, I would, you know, put $5 in my little tip jar or whatever that I had at my apartment. And that adds up. And I was able to, like, go on vacations with that, travel with that. You think that it's not a lot, 
you know, you think that just if you go, I don't know, to the 99 cent store and you're like, okay, everything's a dollar, let me spend $20. That like little $20 here, $20 there, like just throwing it like that, it adds up and you don't realize it, okay? If you just put that money into savings, then you'll have money saved up. So that's number one, save the money that you do have, even if you don't make a lot of money, everybody, everybody, even if you save a dollar, okay? Anything you save, save your money because one, you, you'll have a little cushion to put a down payment on a car, a house, whatever it is that you wanna do or start a business if that's what you choose to do. Um, and then number two, you just get in the habit of just having good spending habits or good saving habits, you feel me? And paying, your credit your credit stuff on time i like i said i messed up my credit by the time i had to get my apartment i had to have my mom my mom co-sign for me most of all live within your means okay live within your means for me i would rather look my car is paid off and it's been paid off for about a year maybe two now almost two years and do you know how tempting it is okay for me i really want a jeep wrangler i really want to just sell my car, trade in or whatever I have to do and get a new car. But right now I don't have a car note because my car's paid off and I don't miss having a car note, but at the same time I want a new car, but I'm trying to be wise right now and just, <sighs> let, me, let me not buy a new car right now. Let me save that extra, whatever the car note would have been. Let me save that extra couple hundred dollars each month. What's the point? My car is there's nothing wrong with my car it's reliable and whatever and you kind of have to make those wise decisions like that save your money invest your money in property one of my clients what is she she's an estate planner and she let me know too i already kind of knew this but she let me know she was like look girl you're doing the right thing right now for your age because most of her clients most of their wealth come mo most of the wealth of wealthy people comes from owning property because think about it this way, let's do the math really quick, okay? This is gonna be quick. So if I purchase this house now, start off small, start at home, and then I'm able to purchase another house, I'm able to rent this out, this house out, and rent it out for more money than I than the mortgages, right? So from there, I'm able to go to the next home and then buy another home and then rent this home out. And then eventually you won't have to work if you just keep buying property. Everybody could do whatever they want with their with their money, okay? And I honestly never thought I would wanna own a home because I don't know. And owning a home isn't for everybody. And especially if you like to move around, especially if you're not from the city that you're from. I'm from LA, so it kind of made sense for me to buy here. Um, but that's just my plan. Always invest your money towards the future for your kids, for the next generation. And yeah, make your money work for you, even if it's a little bit of money, you feel me? Think about it this way, even though right now, if you have to drive a car that you don't like, or if you have to, you only have one pair of shoes and that's all you have and that's all you can afford, if you're wise with your money, I promise you, it is not going to be like that forever. If you make good decisions in your life, it is not going to be like that forever, okay? If you keep working hard, it is not going to be like that forever. So don't get caught up in wanting like material things that, that just eat your money if you don't have the means for that. You know what I'm saying? Don't just think about, oh, I need to get my hair done, I need to have my nails done, I need to have this purse or these shoes and things like that. And then at the end of the day, you're stuck in the same position in life forever and ever and then you're unhappy and it's like, oh, well, what, well, what happened? Well, you blew all your money on a bunch of crap. That's what happened. So keep in mind that just because you have to live a certain lifestyle now that may not be your dream lifestyle, it's not gonna be like that forever if you keep saving and making the right decisions and working hard toward what you want. Another thing that I did wanna say, a big thing, this is gonna be controversial and I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but another thing that you can do in order to be successful and save money and things like that is don't have kids that you can't take care of. That's probably one of the number one things that you graduate high school, don't, don't have kids that you can't take care of and have good credit and save your money. That's really all there is to life. Does it matter to you that no one has seen your hubby with you on camera? Cause I'm in a sim and I am in a similar situation, but he is in my hubby. Um, I don't really know what that means, but um, 
Well, I, could, I guess I could answer that in two ways. Does it matter to you that no one has seen your hubby with you on camera? Okay, is this one of those situations, you know girls, well, I don't do this, but um, I've heard guys tell me that somebody has done this to them, where the girl is like, oh, post a picture of me on your Instagram, like, why are you hiding me? Or I don't know, something like that. Um, here's my thing. I am extremely private with my relationship. With my personal Facebook, for instance, I only have my friends and family on there and I still don't post things like, oh, I'm so in love with this man and he's just such a rock star and whatever. Or, oh, me and babe, we're going on a hike today and we're wearing matching outfits. Or I don't even know whatever people say or I just wanna, <laughs> I just wanna put it out there that Steven, you are the best man ever, and blah, 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 blah. like whatever the case may be, I I don't do that. That's not my style. That's not his style. And if I want to say something to him, then I say it. If I want to say, if I want to write him something, I'll write in a letter. If I want to text him, I'll text him. Whatever. You know what I mean? Uh, I feel like all that stuff is for show, and it's just stupid and it's fake. And sometimes relationships are not perfect, okay? But sometimes. Girl, I've known people who they'll post things like that, like, oh my gosh, this man is such a rock star, or I'm so glad to be spending this time with you, and it'll be like a paragraph paragraph long, and it's like, girl, I saw you in the bathroom or something with this other guy last night. I'm not even joking. I have seen stuff like that, or even with guys, like, oh, my wifey and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you were just sliding into my DM asking me what it do, okay? Seriously, this stuff has really happened. I'm not even joking, okay? And so to me, I'm like, like, what the f Like, that's so weird to me. It's not of any importance for me or somebody, or if you're watching this in this situation, to say, oh, post a picture of me on your whatever. So that way girls can see me and get jealous. Like, I don't give a f what anybody thinks I don't care okay I know my relationship you don't know my relationship and that's how you should feel about your man okay and secondly um if you want to if I'm going to answer the question in a way where you know why don't I put him in my videos and things like that because that's this is what I do for a hobby um I do hair and makeup stuff and I buy stuff and he kind of has nothing to do with it and so like why would I put him in my videos you feel me and I'm not trying to judge people who do that my one of my best friends in my head Carly Bible you know she and Brett <laughs> uh they're always in videos together they're cute they're whatever they're it's wonderful um same thing with my other best friend in my head, Nicole Guerrero. Same thing with a couple of my best friends in my head, okay, on YouTube. Like our whole clique, right? <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> no, but I think that it's cool and it's fine and whatever, but it's just not my thing. And the more private your relationship is, the better. Are you guys annoyed by this? It's best for me to keep my relationship private because relationships are hard as it is. And it's like, if you come at me sideways about anything in my personal life, then we're gonna have a little bit of a problem. You feel me? It's hard enough as it is being on YouTube. You know, some some people might leave you a comment like, oh, you're ugly ass or you're a stupid ass bitch or um, you're not that pretty or oh, um, your eyes are big and like, I don't know, somebody said something like, oh, your eyes look enlarged and you have big features. <laughs> and it's like, okay, but I'm still bomb. And what does that have, like, did that make you feel better? If that made you feel good about yourself, then okay, like, fine, you can take that. Like, go ahead, keep that. That's why I don't take pictures of him. I don't, I don't do any of that stuff. And then also I take pictures and stuff for social media, like makeup and hair kind of and videos and whatever. But I also don't, you guys know, if you guys follow me on social media, which you should, I really don't sit there and Snapchat everything. Like, oh, I'm eating sushi. I don't do things like that. I like to live in the moment. If I go to a concert, if I go to a show, I like to like be in the moment. You know, I'm, I might take one picture of my outfit or something like that, but I don't know. I just don't put my whole entire life. Next question, how did you build your self-confidence? Um, first of all, I'm really, I mean, I'm confident generally speaking, but I do have insecurities. I have several insecurities, okay? And just like any human on earth, right? But I just don't let those insecurities eat me because then if I did, it's like, oh my gosh, like I shouldn't even do this or that. It just stops you from doing things when really the world doesn't give a fuck about you, okay? 
The world does not care about you. So you have to care about yourself. You have to have confidence in yourself. Other people aren't just gonna go around and build you up. Just like people don't, there's not like a money tree that grows out of the earth and people are just throwing around money like that. You have to go get it for yourself. Same thing with confidence, you know? And when I say the world doesn't give a F about you, it's kind of a liberating thing when you realize that. You shouldn't be sad about it because when the world doesn't care about you and when people don't really care about you, you know, somebody's gonna come across my video and probably think something like, oh, she's a stupid ass bitch or she's a bitch or she's, ugly or she's conceited or she's an or whatever the case may be somebody's gonna think about that and then they're gonna move on with their day and then they're gonna go to the next thing or person and whatever think the same thing or think something else go eat a sandwich i don't know okay so um the world doesn't care about you so that person said what they had to say about me or thought what they had to think about me okay cool and my life goes on <laughs> you know just like their life goes on you know so it's kind of a wonderful thing that the world doesn't care about you because then i don't know it's liberating in a way because then you're not so obsessed with the fact that oh what's what does this person think of me like who gives a sh what this person thinks of you you know what i mean like i don't even really care do things that make you feel good about yourself that's really how you build confidence okay I built confidence. I would say I was the most insecure when I wasn't doing anything with my life. That's what really made me insecure because then I would be insecure speaking to other people because you know when you're making small talk and people are people ask you things such as, oh, what do you do? Or what school do you go to? Or whatever, and you don't have anything to answer and it's just like, well, I don't do anything. I smoke pot and, uh, go to the library all day and watch movies and chill. You know what I mean? It, it, that That's what made me insecure. And there was a time where I was depressed and I was doing sh like that every single day. So that's what made me insecure is like when I wasn't really doing anything with my life. And so in order for me to not be insecure, I started to do something with my life. And what do you like to do aside from hair and makeup? I love politics. I love history. I love um, American history in particular. Uh, I find it so intriguing. I love America and I love being an American and I don't know, I, I just love learning about the history and all that kind of stuff. I love learning how everything came to be and why things are the way that they are. I love home decor. I love doing my own DIY stuff that I might find on Pinterest. I love sanding things, repainting things. I love decorating. I love cleaning. I love cooking. Like I love being domestic. I, I honestly do. I really do. Um, it's really not a drag to me. Like I like having a clean, beautiful home. I think that if I wasn't doing hair, I would love to be an interior decorator. I would love to do that. I love home decor. All right, so I'm gonna end this video here because I know this is gonna be super freaking long. Leave me comments down below. Let me know your reactions to the co to the questions that I've answered or let me know any questions that you might have in the comments down, in down below. If you're not subscribed to my channel, then please take a moment to subscribe. Also, if you don't follow me on social media, then follow me on my Instagram, my Snapchat, my Facebook, and my Twitter. And other than that, you guys will see me in my next video. So thank you so much for watching, bye.